got an exam question walkthrough here covering halogens and enthalpy change. So the question looks at displacement reactions of the halogens, the relative reactivity, disproportionation, bond enthalpy calculation, and an unfamiliar enthalpy change. Remember to give a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to stay in touch with future content and leave a comment if you'd like to see a particular topic covered in a future video. Okay, so here's the question. It's on four separate slides, so I'll just click through the slides. You can pause, have a go at the question, and then I'm going to go through the answers. Okay, so part A, we've got to write an equation for the reaction between bromine and iodide ions. So there it is there. Why is iodine less reactive than bromine? So iodine's got a larger atomic radius than bromine. Iodine's got more shells, so it's got more electron shielding than bromine. And iodine therefore has a weaker nuclear attraction for the gained electron than bromine. Part B now. So iodine reacts with water as shown below. Using oxidation numbers, explain why this is disproportionation. So obviously the first thing I want to do is show the oxidation numbers there of the iodine. So it's zero in its elemental form, minus one in HI, and plus one in HIO. And that's because the oxygen, because it's more electronegative, has a negative two oxidation number. Hydrogen's plus one. So to maintain neutrality, the iodine has to be plus one. So first thing I'm doing is giving the definition for disproportionation. That's where the same element is oxidized and reduced. And you can see from those oxidation numbers that iodine is the element in, in question. So iodine's oxidized from zero to plus one in HIO, and it's reduced from zero to minus one in HI. One disadvantage of using chlorine for the purification of drinking water, I've got a couple of things here, just need to say one of these. Chlorine is toxic, is the first thing I would go for. Or you could talk about chlorine when it reacts with organic matter in water, it can produce carcinogenic cancer causing compounds, and an example of that is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. Part C now, so the enthalpy part of the question kicks in now. We've got to calculate the bond enthalpy for the HCl bond from all of that information. So when you're using bond enthalpies, the way I sort of describe the calculation is an in minus out calculation. So the delta H, that minus 184, is equal to the energy going in to break the bonds in the reactants. So in other words, to break an HH bond and a ClCl bond. And you're going to subtract from that the energy that you get out when the new bonds form. So we're going to get energy out when two moles of HCl form. So putting the numbers in, we get that. And obviously X refers to the bond enthalpy for HCl. So we'll tidy that up. So 2X equals 679, so that's the sum of the bracket, plus 184, so we're taking that over to the other side. So 2x comes out at 863, therefore x is half that, 431.5. So the bond enthalpy is plus 431.5 kilojoules per mole. And part D, the final bit, so this is the unfamiliar enthalpy change. So enthalpy change of vaporization, we're told, is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance changes from liquid to a gas at its boiling point. So we've just got to turn that into an equation with state symbols. So it's obviously Br2 liquid going to Br2 gas. And then we've just got to suggest whether we think this enthalpy change of vaporization is exo or endothermic. Well, it's going to be endothermic, and that's because energy has got to be put in to overcome the intermolecular forces between the liquid bromine molecules to turn them into the gaseous bromine molecules. So I'll phrase that like this. Energy is needed to overcome the induced dipole-dipole forces so I'm naming the type of intermolecular force between the liquid bromine molecules.